and welcome back to our kitchen. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make the absolute best southern buttermilk fluffy biscuits. Seriously, these are to die for. Hey darling, can I tell you what's been on my mind? Sick and tired of the nine to five in the city light. Hey darling, we could get out of town See the beautiful world around, wanna see it now The first thing you're gonna need is some white lily flour This is the self-rising flour If anybody tells you to use any other kind of flour other than white lily They are lying, they're just trying to have the best biscuits at the party because I've used them all and white lily is the best and the way to go. You're going to want to have two cups of white lily flour. I'm going to show you how to measure it now. So you're going to spoon it into your measuring cup. What this does is it gives you an accurate measurement without having all that flour compact down like you would with brown sugar. I'm just going to spoon it in there. And then you're going to take the back of your spoon and you're just going to scrape over the top and you've got a perfectly measured cup of flour. Personally, when I'm making biscuits, I like to double sift. This flour does come pre-sifted. I'm using this sifter that's got this lever handle on it. I do prefer the one with the crank handle, but I could never find one, so this is what we're going to be using today. You just put that flour in there and go ahead and sift it all so it's super powdery fine for that biscuit dough. I forgot to mention that this recipe I'll be making today is going to make roughly about 12 or 13 biscuits. Next, you're going to get out that butter that I showed you how to make earlier. You can also use a stick butter. And I'm going to be using a grater. I've got a couple different ones here. I think I'm going to use this cheese grater because it's got a larger grate. I'm just going to take that butter and go ahead and grate it into your flour. One thing to keep in mind when making biscuits is they really like to be very cold. So I stuck this butter in the freezer just until I was ready to use it. And you can do the same with all of your other ingredients as well. When I'm cooking in the kitchen, I rarely ever measure. I just kind of eyeball everything. So I would say that this butter is probably about an eighth of a cup. Now that we've got about an eighth of a cup of butter in, I'm gonna put about an eighth of a cup of Crisco. You can do all butter, some people do all Crisco. I prefer half and half because I feel like the butter gives it a really nice flavor, but the Crisco gives it a really nice texture. And we're just gonna plop that in. If I haven't already mentioned, I'm gonna let you know now that biscuit making is one messy process. You could use a fat cutter, but I've always learned that using your hands is your best tools. So I'm just gonna go ahead in here and incorporate all of this Crisco and butter until it feels kind of like a moon sand consistency and all of the butter is really, really small piece. No need to wash your hands yet. Go ahead and grab that fresh buttermilk from making our very fresh butter earlier. And I'd say it's probably about 3 fourths of a cup you're just gonna go ahead and pour that in and start mixing with your hands. When you're mixing this dough, you don't wanna over mix, so you just kinda go around the bowl and fold it into the center. I watch you as you dry. Do you know I'm looking? I've taken just a few cups of flour and stuck it into a bowl. I made a little well, just as like if you were making some pasta. And I'm going to spatula this super sticky dough into the center of that flour well. And we're just going to uh help. I'm just gonna drop this in to our flour well. Make sure I get all that dough in there. Speaking of wells, if you haven't seen our latest video on how to dig your own shallow well, I'll leave a link down below where you can go and check that out. Now that I've got this dough and this flour well, I'm just going to bring a little bit of flour from around the edges and kind of fold and flatten. I'm not going to want to work all this flour in, just enough to get it a workable, non-sticky dough. 
And the reason why you want to fold and flatten is because that is going to make up all of those flaky biscuit layers that everybody loves. I've got this dough at a pretty manageable consistency. I'm just going to pour out a bit of flour onto my clean workspace and I'm going to continue working it on the counter. So once again, folding and flattening. If I get any sort of sticky spot, I can just kind of cover it with a little bit of flour. All right, I don't want to over mix this, so I think we're at a good consistency for cutting the biscuits. I'm just going to flour a little bit on my rolling pin. I'm going to roll it out into a sort of like a long oblong shape. It doesn't have to be perfect. We're just trying to get it about an inch thick. Before I start cutting our biscuits, I'm gonna go ahead and prepare my cast iron skillet. I personally like to take a bit of Crisco on my hand and just run it all over the pan, sides and all, make sure it's really nice and lathered so none of the biscuits stick. But you could also use a vegetable oil or olive oil. All right folks, I've never been one to buy fancy cutters, so my biscuit cutter of choice today is this little mason jar that I had the buttermilk in. So there is a trick when cutting biscuits. You're gonna wanna put it into the dough, straight down and straight up. Otherwise, if you twist, you're gonna have really flat biscuits. Don't you know that I would cause I'm just loving this moment. Can we stay here forever, forever, forever? Be very gentle when pulling these biscuits up. You're just gonna wanna nestle them nicely into your cast iron pan. Make sure that all the biscuit edges are touching. That's gonna help them all to sort of rise and become really fluffy biscuits. With all those scraps, you're just gonna put it up in a ball and do the same process, roll it out to about an inch thick and cut your biscuits until you don't have any extra dough left. Do you recall when we were young, running from our things at once without thinking twice? We've got all of our biscuits tucked in bed in our little cast iron pan. You're going to want to baste them with a vegetable oil or my personal choice is butter. Again, I just think it adds to the flavor of these buttermilk biscuits. You're just going to want to drench the tops with this oil or butter or Crisco to help them get nice and brown on their tops. Our biscuits are ready to go and I've got our oven preheated to 500 degrees Fahrenheit. I know it sounds scary, but please believe me when they only need about 10 to 12 minutes in the oven at 500 degrees, it makes the perfect buttermilk biscuit. The oven just beeped. Let's take a look. Nice and brown. Look at how beautiful those biscuits are. Hey y'all, I just can't wait to let these cool. I'm gonna go ahead and pull one out to show you just how fluffy these biscuits are. Look at those flaky layers. So absolutely beautiful and fluffy. Let's do a taste test. I personally like to put butter and honey on my biscuits, but let's do a taste test before we add any of those yummy extras. Mm. These are the absolute best buttermilk biscuits. No need to buy any from the freezer section at the store. And they go. And we have to try and keep Is there such thing as northern buttermilk biscuits? I don't know. <laughs> I've only lived in the south, so let me know if you're from the north and you guys have your own kind of buttermilk biscuits. We're bringing these over to a family's house for dinner, but as always, be sure to give this video a big thumbs up if you liked it. Hit that subscribe button if you'd like to see more videos of us in our farm. And be sure to hit the notification bell so you're notified every time we upload a new video. You can find all of our social media links down in the description box below. And as always, we hope y'all have a great rest of your day. Bye!
running from all things at once without thinking twice. 